Hello and welcome to the next episode of Women Tech Makers. My name is Alex Meyer, and today with me in the studio I have Lynn Langett, who is a friend and a GDE, a Google Developer Expert. So Lynn, tell me a little bit about what it means to you to be a GDE. I'm a big data and cloud architect, so it really helps me to be able to provide my customers with you know, timely access to information about the Google Cloud. I, I work with customers to develop usually proofs of concept because for a lot of my customers, the Google Cloud is a new platform for them. So we'll you know, work uh, side by side and we'll usually come up with a POC so that they can understand the capabilities of your cloud. And how does it usually go from there on? Well, it depends. You know, you're not the only cloud game in town. So um, sometimes the customers will find that your cloud is the best pick for them and sometimes somebody else's will be. How has the Google Cloud platform been in your experience for your business? Well, the services that my customers most often use are App Engine, um, and I work with the enterprise. So I've got Java customers most generally, um, although I have had one Python implementation that we're going to talk a little bit more about later in the show. Um, and then I've done quite a lot of work with BigQuery because I work in the big data area, and um, I'm particularly impressed with the breadth of service offering around BigQuery. Great. Um, so you also are an educator. So what kind of courses or other offerings do you develop? Well, I've done actually a number of things. Um, I wrote some courses for a company called Pluralsight, and they're in-depth developer video-based trainings with uh, code samples. And I, uh, did it, I did those a couple of years ago on a, a Google App Engine with Java to get uh, developers started. And then I also uh, did a series on Google Compute Engine right when it came out of a trusted tester and into a general release. And then I did a series on BigQuery. And what I've done recently, I, I updated this in January because that series was a couple of years old, is I made the Google App Engine courseware um, updated because App Engine had some new features and new capabilities. And I put it out on YouTube this time for even broader audience reach. So if our listeners and uh, viewers wanted to watch these videos, where would they find them? Uh, I have a channel on YouTube. It's uh, under SoCalDevGal, because I'm based in Southern California. Um, and I have over, I think it's like 150 different videos on cloud and big data technologies. That is great. Wow. That is quite a bit. I bet it took you a lot of time to make. Well, you know, some of the videos are really short because um, one of the things that I have found is uh, useful for people is as I'm staying relevant on these new technologies, I will actually just turn on a screen capturing, um, you know, Camtasia, and I'll just show people what I'm studying and, you know, edit out the bloopers and stuff. But, you know, they like to kind of see what I'm looking at, and it sometimes saves them time. Yeah, that is, I bet that's a great thing to do. So um, you mentioned that you worked on a Python project, and uh, we have another guest with us today, Eric Grimm, software developer. Hi, Eric. Hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. It's a little cold today, but otherwise it's nice. Yes, Eric is joining us today from Long Island. Um, so nice to have you on the show, Eric. Thanks. So, I'm glad to. <laughs> so Lynn and Eric worked together on a project which was quite unusual in a few ways. So can you tell us a little bit more about it, Lynn? Sure, well, I'll talk first about how I got brought into the project, and I, you know, maybe uh, Eric will have some insights that he wants to share with the audience. So, so uh, Eric works for a, a, a PR company, and as part of a project, he was asked to create a registration site on Google App Engine, and his background is in Cold Fusion. And so the company reached out to me as a developer expert to uh, help him as a new developer on App Engine to uh, understand that platform. So what we did, because I live in you know greater Southern California, is we did remote pairing. In fact, this is the first time I've actually seen Eric's face. So um, because we did voice and we did screen shares, and uh, I helped him out, you know, understanding the APIs. And it's kind of interesting because for both of us, it was our first time using Python. And I actually, um, from my perspective, and Eric, you certainly get to weigh in here. I thought the Python samples were pretty usable and pretty well written um, and got us up and going. So to that end, um, I think it would probably be interesting for the audience to hear for you as a new Google App Engine developer what your experience was like, honestly, in, in getting an App Engine site up and going. And before you talk about that, you should also say what the site's for because it's kind of a cool, cool thing that the site's for. 
Sure. Uh, well, as Lynn mentioned, I work for a, a promotions marketing agency. We basically deal with sweepstakes and contests and moderation tools, things of that nature. But we do a lot of registration forms along the way. We've done work with Google and YouTube in the past, and we were brought in to work on this project. It's called Call to Code. It's um, a website for students in Ireland. The teachers will register the students, and the students will take part in a, an online coding competition. Then the winners will move on to an on-site an on uh, competition, again, in Ireland. Hopefully next year they'll roll it out a little to a little wider audience. Um, but as she said, I do come from a cold fusion background. Uh, we initially intended to write the site in cold fusion using our SQL Server database. Uh, Google Security wanted us to write it in Google App Engine, so I chose Python as my language of choice for the project. It seemed to have a lower barrier to entry than trying to jump into Java or something a little more technically oriented. The samples on the Google site were were great. They helped me get it up and running up to speed very quickly and Lynn was instrumental along the way in pointing me in the right direction on quite a few of the stumbling blocks that came up. So I think it might be interesting for the audience because I think a lot of people are probably having a similar background with traditional you know, web apps and relational databases to talk about some of the things that, that, that we talked about. In particular, I think we talked quite a lot about the high replication data store because that was really a different data model than the relational store. And um, I think the audience might benefit from hearing like what was the most useful in getting you up and going on the high replication data store and any stumbling blocks or anything, anything you learned, you know, that kind of stuff would be useful for them. Right. Well, the high replication data store is definitely a different paradigm than a relational database that I'm used to. Um, some things that were uh, very easy to get along with are the ability to just add properties to a particular entity within the data store. Uh, you can add as many properties as you want, but then you can end up with some entities that are missing properties, which makes them a little more difficult to find if you're searching on a, on a particular field piece of data, for example. Um, the fact that it's High replication means that sometimes it might take a little while for objects to be consistent across across the, the vast network of, of Google servers. Um, so we did run into a couple issues where, for example, a teacher would register one of their students and the student wouldn't show up immediately just because it hadn't been replicated all the way across the data store. But with a little um, user education, that wasn't an issue that really brought itself to bear in the, uh, the live application. So um, where are you right now in this project? Has it, um, you're in, has you're it launched? You're in beta, aren't you? Or are you launched? Um, we ran through a beta phase where we had a few select teachers and a few select students that used the site, ran through some practice contests, and gave us some generally positive feedback. We are in the process of gearing up for a wider launch. There is an actual coding competition coming up on April 3rd in Ireland. We've had something along the lines of 250 teachers that have registered for the contest, who have then in turn registered close to 800 students that will be taking part in the contest once it rolls out live. So when do you expect to have it rolled out and all these 800 students to begin coding? Um, again, it's a timed contest. There is a 24-hour period for them to enter. So on April 3rd is when it launches for the 24-hour period that they will be able to enter the competition itself. All right. Well, good luck with that. And uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So. Um, Lynn, um, can you share a little bit about the experience? Um, you know, coding, pairing up with somebody all the way across, you know, the continent, and 
Well, uh, just generally, I, I pair program. Um, and, you know, I'll do it in person when I can, but I also remote pair. I think for Eric, it was new to pair program. Um, yes, it was. Yeah, and um, maybe a little skeptical in the beginning, maybe, maybe. Um, but we, you know, once we got, for example, a couple modules up and going, you know, it was a little bit, you know, more, uh, more fun to do, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I was a little bit apprehensive to uh, dig into the Python because my expertise is Java, and this is literally the first time I did anything in Python. But um, again, kudos to you guys, good samples. Seriously, good samples matter. They really, really matter. Um, and I guess that's my ask up back out to the Google people who are watching this. Anything that you're making for any platform, but you know, my world is the cloud, Make sure your samples are rock solid because it really matters. I mean, it, it allowed you to hit your deadline, Eric, I think. Absolutely. Well, great. So, Lynn, there's another project that you're working on. It's a nonprofit? There is, yeah. I'm the co founder of a nonprofit called Teaching Kids Programming. And uh, really, there's two aspects that I wanted to share with the audience here. First of all, um, we actually use Google App Engine as part of the solution. Um, what it is, it's a set of free and open source courseware to introduce children ages 10 and up to programming in Java, which um, some people might say, you know, Java, that's not a modern language. But that is the language, if there is one, that's offered at high schools for advanced placement. So, you know, we had a lot of requests for on ramping, so that's why we created the courseware, and it's up on GitHub. Um, the connection to Google App Engine is that it kind of looks like Logo, uh, the basic recipes. So it's got the turtle, you know, drawing the squares and stuff. And so when the kids execute um, the, the program, it uh, sends uh, the blob up to Google App Engine. And the reason, this is actually the reason I got into the Google Cloud way back when, because um, it was easy to use and you guys had a very generous free tier. And we still use it today, and uh, you know it's just it's a great way to get started on the Google Cloud if you have a nonprofit project. So I wanted to share that. Great, thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. This was another episode of Women Tech Makers. My name is Alex Meyer. Goodbye.